Hi, I'm Kayleigh and I'm an art tutor with South Lanarkshire Leisure and Culture and today we're going to do lesson six of our drawing course where we're going to use some watercolour pencils. So watercolour pencils are just like drawing with normal coloured pencils except you get to use a little bit of water at the end and it turns it into a picture that looks more like an actual watercolour. Um, the benefits are you get so much more control, they are so versatile, they are handy to carry about whether you're doing a still life like we're doing today, we've got lots of fruits um, or whether you are out drawn in the park or something like that as well, then they're really handy to work with. All you need is your pencils and a little pot of water um, and a paintbrush. So we're going to get started. I'm going to set this up. We'll do a couple little recaps on our composition for our fruit um, and then go over the basics of our watercolour pencils before we go into actually drawing a nice setup. So with our watercolour pencils, um, the set I've got here is a Conti set, but they're all roughly the same. They'll just have different, some will be a lot softer than others, some will be a little bit harder, some will blend easier. Um, it doesn't really matter what type you've got, you'll get used to them. Um, I've also got three paintbrushes here. I've got a kind of small, medium and large, but just whatever you've got at home, you should be able to use. Um, and I've got a normal pencil and rubber here as well, just to sort of sketch some things out. I think it's important first of all just to try out your watercolour pencils and we'll just do a couple of little sketches on the page, get used to them and then once you're kind of comfortable with them we'll go on and we're going to do a still life of fruit. Um, so we've got lots of lots of different colours and shades and textures that we need to get in with our watercolour pencils. So let's get started. I'm going to choose um, a few different colours so I'm going to take a red an orange and a yellow. And I always think these are quite good to try out because you can get some really nice blends. So rule number one with these is do not dip them in the water. Um, it's tempting, but I promise it's just gonna ruin your pencils rather than um, help you along the way. So you want to draw everything on your page first and then add your water. So I'm gonna put a little bit of red. And we're gonna add our orange. Or yellow and just do them in like kind of blocks like this. You can then try one where you've got your red in a block and then try your orange but overlap it a little bit and then overlap your yellow as well. So you're starting to see the blend of the colours simply with the pencils and not necessarily just with the water using it to blend. So there's there's just sort of two ways to do it. You've got blending purely with the water and blending a little bit with the pencils as well. If you've used coloured pencils before, you know you can sort of layer these up anyway. Um, so once you've got sort of one, same as you would a normal pencil, one layer of red on something, add a more pencil on top, more again, more again the darker it'll get. So you can get this sort of gradient going on. So sometimes you won't actually need too much water with these to make it look really effective. You do want sometimes just to see the pencil marks shine through. Um, you can also work gradient wise with your hand um, using pressure to sort of get lighter and lighter and lighter. And we've gone over that in the pencil and charcoal class as well. Um, just on how to do that. So you can always do a recap if you want to see some more shapes and techniques. But for your watercolour pencils, this is probably as far as you're going to go um, at this stage. So I'm going to take my brush and you just need some clean water, nothing else, and don't have it too, too wet. And when you put that on, it's got a lovely reaction that turns it right into paint. That's what your red will look like. And the good thing about these is you can be so controlled with where you're putting your water. Um, I'm going to take this over into my orange. And you can sort of go back and forth over the blend here just to get it sort of merging a little bit easier. A little bit more water and then I'm going to take my yellow. And these 
these watercolour pencils definitely keep their vibrancy um, still really, really bright. Now, this one we're going to do, I'm going to start at the yellow side. Um, reason being is the yellow is harder. We can't really get the red into the yellow or you've just, you've lost your, your red completely. And I'm just washing my brush a little bit in between. If I feel like I've got a little bit of red on my brush, then just giving it a little bit of a wash. So that's me done both. Um, you can see the slight difference between them. I think this is a much smoother blend. Whereas this is a little bit more separated, so you can definitely tell there's your three colours, whereas this is slightly more soft. Um, again, adding some water to the one that we've done as a gradient, you can see you lose a little bit of it, but you've still got, it's still definitely darker at one side than the other, but you do lose that sort of texture if you compare these two, where you can see the the sort of green of the paper and things come through. You can use your water on your brush to sort of manipulate things too. So if you feel like you want it to be a bit lighter, adding a bit more water, pushing it back. If you feel that you've got a bit of a, a sharp edge, you can push that out. You can use your brush to push it out a little bit. Um, and I know there is a course on watercolours as well, so if you wanted, if you quite enjoy this, you can always have a little look at that one too. Okay. It's amazing how much coverage you can get as well. You can actually go right outside what you've drawn and get a full flat colour. And the more water you've got on there, the flatter you can maybe get that. You can add big dollops of water into it and you'll start sort of start to see them spread out as well. You can get some really nice effects. And we'll let that dry. You'll see, you can see it a little bit just now how it's bleeding into one another. Um, but they work so, so nicely. They are so easy to, to handle as well compared to just putting paint straight on the pages. You feel a little bit easier maybe putting a bit of pencil on and then adding your water to get this effect. So that's just done our trial. Um, let's move on and do our fruit. So I've just got another sheet of paper here. Um, I've got my uh, pencils already. And we're going to look at the fruit right up close. So for our fruit, we've got a, um, for a composition, sorry, we've been over this, the kind of maybe lesson two, I think, for composition. Um, we want something a little bit tall in it. We want something a little bit small in it, so you're balancing that out. You're wanting an odd number of objects. So we've got five here. And you want a mix of colors, a mix of textures as well. So you've got your really smooth pear, pretty smooth banana as well where you've got your little lumpy strawberry with lots of seeds and things coming in. Um, and then you've got this texture on the, the orange as well. So I'm going to show you how to sort of layer that up with your watercolour pencils. Um, the banana is getting browner the longer the lesson goes on. So this might actually change a little bit as you go, but it's quite nice to work with having your brown sort of spots and then your yellow in the background, which is with watercolour pencils, you maybe go around it slightly different than you would if you were doing acrylics or or actual watercolours as well. So the first thing we want to do is just sketch out what you can see. Um, and I'm just going to start with some shapes on the page and sketch them together. Please take your time doing this. Pause the video if you need to, to just take your time getting this drawn in. The, the most important thing is just keeping your pencil sketching really light. And then it's easy enough to rub out as well. So you're looking at where everything's overlapping. I've set this up to have overlaps in it. It makes your composition much more exciting. When you're looking at things, you're going, right, so the banana is actually a little bit higher than the tangerine here. So you want to make sure that that's 
come it up enough. You're also looking to see the banana is a little bit further out than the pear. Depending what angle you're sort of looking at this at, it might be slightly different. Um, I mean, if you're just a couple of inches taller than me, your view will be different of the still life as well. Depends where you're sitting. You might want to set up your own still life as well. Choose some fruits from your cupboard or vegetables. Vegetables are nice as well. The strawberry is actually quite big. If you look at it in comparison to the tangerine, it's actually not too far off when you take into account your stock. Um, so the stock comes out a little bit further. And the tangerine there. And it overlaps the banana. So there's almost like this constant narrative you need to go through in your head of, right, so where does that sit in comparison? Or maybe that's just me, maybe I just need to look at it. So. But this stop is definitely more over the, the sort of paper. I've just put a paper background for this um, rather than hitting the banana. So I'm just going to make that a wee bit smaller. my main shapes in. Now I'm just going to have a wee look away and look back and you start to see some slightly different parts you maybe need to change. I love the stock on this pear. You've got the really dark brown going to a light brown into the green which is going to be really nice with the pencils. Same with the banana here, there's a lovely fade. Quite harsh actually but it works. Nice. Hopefully after this you start looking at your fruit bowl in a new light, taking in all the different aspects of your fruit. Your fruit. Now if you're feeling particularly confident, um, you don't need to use a normal pencil, you can go straight in with your watercolour pencils. I always think it's quite good just to get a bit of confidence when you first start out to just use your pencil first off. I'm just using my rubber to tidy up a few little bits here. on the, the strawberry are, are lovely as well. They're a wee bit tricky to draw so do try and make sure you're drawing what you see and not what you think you see. It's very easy to sort of give it a little bit of a hat on top but you actually want a lot of these curly little leaves sort of sticking out and they're such unusual shapes. in all different directions. like to do just before I start putting my watercolour pencils on is just give everything a really light kind of dusting with the rubber and it just takes away any really bold lines that maybe you don't want shining through into your watercolour picture because um, you probably will see most pencil marks shine through. Some people love it um, and they love to see the little bits of pencil 
other people not as much. So whatever your preference is, you can give it a wee light dusting. And that'll take some bits away. Now, last bit I'm going to add in is just this line of where the wall meets the table um, and that really anchors everything in. We're going to have our shadows, um, which will help as well, but always have your line going across and it just stops it floating in the middle of the air. It's amazing the difference that one line can make. Um, coloured pencil thing. So your main aim right now is to just use the coloured pencils, almost not thinking too much about adding water to this at the moment. So you can layer things up. Um, I'll show you on this little scrap sheet just now because it will be dry now, so this top one's dry. Um, so just so you can see it really well on the camera. If you are wanting to do anything on top, you can now put your pencil in on top of your dried watercolour pencils and it just goes on normally, it doesn't blend in, it just sits on top um, so you can get really full coverage as well if there were some areas you wanted to cover over um, if you're wanting it to blend in, you've maybe missed the boat a little bit um, you want to make sure you've got this first layer on and then blend it all together um, I'll show you how it works though it is it will add a little bit of a kind of almost glazed layer on top. So you will get the yellow shining through underneath your green there, but it won't blend into the yellow as such. Um, if you were to go right over the top of your green here, you're still going to see those pencil marks shining through. But it's giving you that extra layer. So if we were doing our, um, let's see, we've got our pear. Our pear is very green, but on top of that we've got little brown areas, little speckled bits. Um, so we might want to make our pear mostly green, but then let it dry and add in on top our little brown bits. Uh, similarly to the banana and even the strawberries as well, there's going to be an element of that. So you do want to use that sort of layering technique but it's worth bearing in mind when you put on your first layer, what do you want to blend together? You want all the areas you're going to blend to be on first. So the first thing I'm going to put in is my tangerine. I think tangerine is probably one of the most simple parts of the, the picture in terms of we've got some lovely yellows, we've got some oranges um, and as we get down to the bottom, it's probably a little bit more maybe brown for a shadow rather than um, we try and avoid using black if you can because the black will kind of draw away from any vibrancy in the picture. So I'm going to start with putting in my yellow, where do you see my yellow? And we're going to do most of the blending with our pencils already. So the yellow area is definitely over here. Add my orange on top. And it's quite important to stick within the lines. I know that sounds a wee bit childish, but try and stay in the lines as much as possible because once you've kind of gone out, it's a little bit harder to bring it back in. So precision is quite key here. orange towards this um, top of the tangerine here.
And what I'm going to do is the, the little, I don't know what you call that, it's like almost the stalk that it's grown out of. Um, I'm going to leave that for the second layer. I'm mainly concentrating on just getting my orange blend in here. I'm not bothering too much about the little dimples just now. Again, that's another kind of layer number two. So in the, the little sample one we did at the start, they tend to actually look a bit lighter once you're finished with them. So I'm going to leave it like that just now. Um, and if I need a second layer, I can do a second layer. Get a little bit of brown in just for a shadow. Um, I'm not going to go too wild on it because compared to other parts of the picture, it's not overly dark. blend into that orange to color. You can even layer up your, your orange on top if you feel like it's going a little bit dark. Add more orange on top. There we go. Uh, so that'll smooth out really really nice when we put on our first layer of water. Uh, next up I'm going to do my pear I think. And the pear, um, let's try this slightly differently. We are we're going to do our base colour, it's almost like colour blocking in and we're going to go in on top once it's dry to add in our um, little kind of brownie areas. So I've got a couple of different greens here. I'm just going to try them out on the scrap sheet just to make sure they are the right colour. Now, if you prefer, you can always do your tangerine first and get it complete and then move on. Um, personally, I like to kind of work at them all at the same time, so they're all at the same sort of level. darker on this side of the pear. Um, the light's definitely shining there. So I want to make sure it is still green. It's not necessarily, it's not white or anything. Even it is green. And then I'm going to use a slightly darker green just to add in a wee bit more depth. And we will add a wee bit of brown for our big shadow areas. stock right up the top. I'm going to start it with green and then add in my brown. Make it really dark, it's a little bit thicker at the end there as well. It's tempting to start adding in these little brown bits, try not if you can. And add a little bit of brown over this side make it darker. I'm going to add that in with my green, maybe put a little bit of green on top just to darken it down. Whereas this bit here is a really big shadow. Um, 
So that's something we can highlight a little bit more when we get to the, the sort of second layer. Um, I'm going to try and get it in just now. Just making a guide for things are both. So the banana you can do it in two separate ways. You can either mark in where all your brown is and then add your yellow in or you can do a layer of yellow right the way over the top, or sorry, right the way over the bottom as a base and then add your brown on top of that. Um, I'm going to mark in where my brown is. I'm going to do it with the brown pencil. There is a lot of it. You can see it's definitely, when I took it from the fruit bowl this morning it wasn't near as brown as that. It can be quite fun drawing fruit when it does change so much. Now this is quite a dark brown I would say. Um, so there might be some areas I need to add in, maybe a little bit yellow or orange just to warm it up if I feel like it's getting too dark. Um, but I'll make that call once I've done a little bit of water on it, it's a trial. Your pencils might be slightly different, you might have a warmer brown there. And I would say if you're not sure about what a warmer brown or a cooler brown is, does it err towards more of a blue brown? I would say this is. Um, or does it become more like an orangey brown? That's definitely warmer. Now the brown bit comes right the way down. That's the strawberry. Move it here as well. If you did a full base layer of the yellow, I kind of want these to blend in a little bit, especially there's almost bruised areas here and here and up here as well that I want to blend in with the yellow. Um, but if you've got a really ripe banana that you're using to, to draw, you might prefer just to do a sort of layer of yellow at this stage. Um, so that's my main brown bits in. There's still some more brown dots over here. I'm going to leave that to my second layer. Um, so try and just use your initiative if you get it wrong first time. It's absolutely fine. You can save it as well. Um, but just do what you think is right with how much brown you need on there. My yellow is it's quite a quite a dark yellow rather than a, a bright lemon yellow. Using this one. And the bits I want my brown and my yellow to match together. I'm just overlapping them. I've got my yellow going right over my brown at the top there. Here is this brown bit coming up. Um, I want to leave that sort of by itself and have that just brown. You might reach a sort of point and think, I'm quite happy leaving this just with coloured pencil, not adding in any any water, but um, I promise it'll look good when you've got the water. So now time for the strawberries. Um, strawberries, normally when you sort of see them drawn somewhere, you picture them in your head, you might picture them as being like all red, but then having little white sort of seeds all over them. In reality, it's not normally what it's like. The seeds are actually more of a greeny yellow colour. 
Um, so make sure you're looking at that really up close. The other good thing with our strawberries, we've got really bright white highlights kind of shining through as well. Um, so you can leave space for those white highlights. I'm not going to be too fussy about that just now. You know, it's our first time using watercolour pencils. The main thing we want is to try and blend our watercolours. Um, and we can still have it lighter without having the white. So whenever you're using watercolours or, or the pencils, you can't add white onto anything. You need to let the paper shine through. Um, but it's quite, a, it's quite a tough rule to work with if you've never worked with them before. Um, so don't feel like you have to leave the, the really white bits in this lesson. You can take this a wee step further and um, we'll get on to that. I'm often making life easy right at the start. on there. Um, the other one's sort of facing away from me. I can't really see too much of it. It's just a couple of little green bits on the top. In fact, they're probably a little bit yellowy browny. Yeah, a little bit brown in there. And a little bit of my light green as well. So they blend together quite nicely. And then I'm going to add on the red for my strawberry. Um, in fact, I'll probably just put in the little, little seeds first. Now this is quite a long drop. <laughs> Drawing and painting is an interpretation, remember, so it's up to you how precise you want to be with where the little seeds are. You can copy it exactly, um, or you can be a little, um, I'm being a little bit more loose, just adding them in. Now this one, the seeds are definitely a lot more yellow in it. Um, I have no idea if that's to do with it being more red or purple. I'm going to use my yellow for most of the seeds. And it's all about observation, doing any sort of still life. It's all just observing what can you actually see, not what you think you see. I'm going to add a wee bit of yellow to some of these. Seats. And then get a nice red for our strawberry. Um, and I'm going to work almost like in between the seeds. I don't want them overlapping really. I don't want these blending in. And if there's bits that are a lot darker, um, over this right hand side of the strawberry is definitely a lot darker. So I'm just going to give my pencil and do a second layer. 
just on that bit. It's amazing how just one more layer of pencil, you can see it's really getting darker. Um, so what I might do is stop there, I don't want to do too much um, just now because I think I'll add a second layer to that one. Um, and this one over here, this one's definitely a lot darker. Right, right here. Mm, over here. I'm just going to fill in the rest on my strawberry with some more red. If you need to go for some layers, again, like the darker bits, then maybe second coat. There we go. Um, so I'm going to stop there, um, and we'll do the rest in the next the next layer, I think. Um, so for some of this, you might need just your normal brush. Some you might need a lot smaller brush. But we're going to take everything quite individual. Start with our tangerine. Um, so make sure you get enough water on your brush that you're starting to see the colours all sort of blending using the water to stop where you've got the darker areas as well. So it's a lot darker down here. Look at that. It makes it look so easy, I think, as well, doesn't it, when you've got your colours. What I try and avoid is having too much of an outline, so it looks like there's a bit of an outline round, um, around the left hand side of this tangerine. So I'm just going to blend it in a little bit more if I can. More water equals better blending. And it's definitely a lot lighter, right on the, the front of the, the tangerine here we've got a really big sort of highlight. So again, a little bit of water in here. You can sort of push colours away to get that highlight coming through. Try off your brush in between if you feel like you need it to, to sort of move in a, a different direction or if it's getting too clogged with a certain colour. There we go. I'm going to stop there because I still want to keep some little bits of texture coming through. So I still want to be able to see little bits of the page. I still want some, you can see that sort of line with the brown pencil, which I really like actually. Yeah, but if there are any other bits, this bit up here's a bit lighter. I'm just gonna, you can leave it off there and a wee bit off there. Yeah, let's move on to our pear. Same again, just add in your water. I'm not doing anything particularly fancy, just adding the water to the, the sort of shades I already had there from my pencil. And then I'm going to do this dark bit last. And if you've done that last, then you can really control what bleeds into what. Do you want this to go a wee bit smoother with the rest of your pair? Or do you want it to be quite harsh? 
in the setup I've got. It's very harsh, a very harsh line, so we want to keep it like that. And have that highlight just going up the top here. Um, and I'm going to take a smaller brush. I'm going to blend the green into the brown. And stop with that brown bit at the top. I quite like that. Um, so actually that's a really lovely line coming down here because it doesn't look too much like there's been an outline on it. Um, which makes it more illustrative. Instead it's um, it's nice and soft. It's got a softness to it. But it's darker side is definitely a lot darker. Banana, right. So I'm going to start with my yellow um, and I'm going to add, I'm going to blend that as much as I can. Um, so you'll see once I've added water to the yellow, it makes it a lot brighter, which isn't necessarily what my banana is. It's quite a dull yellow, I would say, which is why I've added some brown in to start off with rather than just wait until the second layer for it all. Um, so I want some of that to sort of seep in and make everything a little bit darker. Um, I'm going to work my way around some of the really brown bits um, because it's, I want to keep those isolated and really brown. So you can see it's starting to calm down a little bit. It was really, really bright at the start. But adding those little brownie bits in have really calmed it down a wee bit. So I'm working around the brown but try not to have too many white bits as well. This is where it becomes a lot easier than just using watercolours because with watercolours everything will totally bleed into one another um, which is nice but you definitely have more control with these and a smaller brush going to stop there, um, let it dry and in the next layer there will be a little bit more texture in it. Okay, strawberry. strawberry. We'll start with the green on my small brush again. Getting some of these leaves. Then 
I'm going to move on to the red. So with this, I'm going to avoid going over the little seeds too much. I want to try and just keep it to the red. Enjoy the, the details of it. Being quite precise. If this is a complete nightmare for you, then just doing your red base layer and put your seeds on once it's dry is an option. I quite like how some of the seeds have blended in and some have like stayed so low as well. You can see this bit's a lot darker, we've got more pencil there so it's making it making it darker. Let me get into this one. So the little bits of white paper are actually good on this because it's almost like the reflection coming through. So don't worry if it looks a wee bit white. This one's a lot more yellow so I'm trying really hard not to wet it with the red too much or it will just become orange and we don't want an orange strawberry. So that is our first layer of our watercolour pencils. Um, I think it's gone all right. We've definitely got some more layers to add in um, and some darkness and things, shadows um, along the ground. Um, why don't we do some shadows just now while we let that dry and then we can come back to adding in our second layer. So the shadows um, are definitely a sort of grey colour because it's, it's on a white paper. I'm just gonna try that on another sheet of paper, yeah. Um, so just using your pencil to mark in where the shadow comes out and try not dip the pencil into the, like the bit you've just wet on the page. You want to try and keep your pencils dry. So if it's too tricky, just leave it um, and do the, the shadows after. Depends where your light's shining as well. You might have really um, like bold shadows. I've deliberately set this up with the light shining right on this side so you can see the shadows over one, one sort of way. Um, but you might, you might not have as harsh a lighting. It's really dark in there. And there's a tiny bit of shadow just under the banana. Sometimes put shadows in feels a wee bit obtuse, but it really works in the end once you see it all. Get the paintbrush. Go as fine as you want to go with your paintbrush or if you need it. 
need a thicker one to sort of cover the area. Whatever works for you. I think that's my shadows and I'm quite happy with how they've turned out. Like I don't think we'll need an extra layer on them because I think the contrast beside our fruit has worked alright. Um, and maybe some need a, an extra layer or something, maybe in there, in that sort of middle bit and this middle bit. But overall, they're nice and soft as well, they've not got harsh lines necessarily. These ones are a wee bit harsher but over here we're nice and soft. So I'm going to let that dry just for a couple of minutes, make sure it's bone dry before I put on my second layer. So for our second layer, um, now's your chance to kind of work out what you want to keep as a, like a dry pencil on top, which will give you texture, and what you want to add another layer of on top with more water again. So doing just what you've done before. Um, Personally, for this one, I'm quite happy with how my tangerines worked out. I think I'm going to add in um, a little bit of brown for the, the top here. And I'm going to keep that just in pencil. And then have that as a contrast beside the smoothness um, of this under part. We've also got the opportunity to put in a little dimples, which are sort of all over. Um, so that's something, again, I don't really want to put water on it, um, but I will add in just some dry pencil. You can go as far as you want with this as well. You could go super detailed um, with each one, or you can almost just add it in as a texture, um, like I'm doing just now where you can't necessarily see every little pencil stroke, but overall as a picture, you know they're there. Um, so that's how I'm going to do mine. The, the paper underneath is actually a textured paper as well, so it kind of shows through. So I want to keep some of that, you can see as well. Um, so yeah, tangerine finished. For the pear, um, again, I quite like how this is all blended together. I think I'll maybe use my brown just to go over a little bit of this shadow to give it a sharper edge. And then it's just maybe adding on some pencil bits of where I see the darkness in these little brownie areas of the pier. Add in some little spots, you can have some larger areas. Some yellowy bits coming through. I'm just trying to be quite intuitive with it, maybe not thinking too much. You might even have your darker green where you've got a couple of little areas. Um, personally, I'm not going to add any more water to this, but you might find that you feel you need an extra layer on top. Um, I just want to get across that. It's not a perfect pair, there are some little blemishes everywhere. I'm happy with how it goes light to dark as well. Banana, yeah, I'm thinking finished the pair. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I'll add in a wee extra bit for shadow as well. I want to get that wee bit darker. Let me check if this is a blue or a grey. Add a wee bit more darkness just in the middle here to show that it's shadow. A wee bit more down here as well. Um, 
um, banana. Right, banana, I'm going to actually do a little bit more yellow and brown over the top. I don't actually think I'll need more water to be honest. Um, probably, no, I think it'll probably be fine. I'm just going to go over with my brown on the really darker bits here and you can start to see the difference between you know how there's within the banana there's some darker areas and some lighter ones and this extra one just on top makes all the difference this a bit more um, and add on some little extra spots as well. And there's so many more brownie bits down here as well. We're just building up brown areas. Some are little spotty bits, some are larger areas. starting to look even more realistic just with a few more little spots all over. Um, I'm not going to bore you by sitting doing this for hours. I'll let you kind of add in some more yourself. Um, and then the strawberries. So the strawberries I feel like they need the most work out of everything just now. I feel like they need a lot more red coming through to show how sort of red and juicy they are. But the benefit of it now all being dry is you can just add a layer of red on top and your little seeds will still shine through. And you can really highlight where the, the bright red bits are, where the more yellowy bits or white bits are. Make it a bit darker over this side. And with this wee one, definitely a bit darker here. Adding some more green in some areas that maybe need darkened up a little bit. There we go. 
Um, I'm going to stop there. I'm quite happy with how it's looking just now. Um, I'd probably go in and do a little bit more over the banana and the strawberries as well. Might even add in a little bit more water, like for example, if you're to add a wee extra layer of the, the water over the red here, it would make it look a lot more kind of like juicy um, and it would definitely pop a little bit more. So you might, you might want to go over just with a second layer on some bits and just see what you think works. Um, but it's totally up to you. If you're like me and you quite like seeing some of the pencil stroke shine through as well. Um, rather than just having it as a watercolour, you know, you've used the pencils, it's nice to see them. Then you might want to leave this a little bit more um, raw rather than going into too much detail with your, your water this time around. Um, here we go. I hope you've enjoyed. So I hope you enjoyed working with your watercolour pencils today and you've learned lots of techniques on how to use them, using them to layer up on top of one another, using them to blend, um, and create a really, really nice picture. Maybe you've got a few different tips on composition and drawing from still life as well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you get some good use out of your watercolour pencils. <laughs>